Hi, everybody. This is your host, Mr. Allen, and welcome back to our podcast. Thanks for tuning in today. So today we are going to be talking about education. Um, as you have known, our education facilities, such as schools and colleges, have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Most schools in the United States have been closed for the rest of the school year. However, this is not an early summer for students or teachers because the school year is continuing, where students are attending and learning through virtual platforms, and they're mostly at home. Um, I can see the challenges and struggles for many parties involved, such as parents, students, teachers, and more. Um, and I think that our education system right now is so interesting, complex, that I wanted to talk to some teachers about their thoughts and feelings about it. So today, my guests are teachers with Uplift Education, which is one of the largest free public charter schools here in North Texas. I worked with them at Uplift Meridian for about two years, which was a lot of fun and which was awesome. And I'm so glad that they agreed to do, be my guests today and be able to talk about like education in a virtual world. So um, I want you to introduce my guests here, Coach Ford, Ms. Schneider. Hello. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Just finished classes. Good time. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I just got through a day of meeting with different teachers and meeting with my kids throughout the day and balancing living with some different family members. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it, yeah, that's something I'm really interested to, to hear more about is just what um, your day looks like compared to what it was. Um, where are, you, are you guys talking from your homes right now? Yep, I'm at my house. So if anybody hears any dogs barking, uh, there's two boxers sitting right beside me. So that's what I deal with on the daily. But yep, I'm at home. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm currently in just north of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm staying with my brother and his family and his two little kids. Um, I just knew that it was going to be hard when all this hit, so I packed up and thought I was going to be here for two weeks, and it turns out it's a lot longer. Yeah. Um, and how, how has that been, like, getting to spend more time with your brother and his family out there? It's honestly, it's been really great, and I'm so glad that I did decide to come out here, and I got to take my dog here with me. Mm -hmm. So I just don't see my family very often because I live in Texas by myself. Right. So... I've just really been able to take in all the time with my family and teaching my nephew how to bake. So awesome. How do you guys feel like your dogs are gonna like adjust once you actually have to go back to work? Uh, mine are gonna <laughs> hate it. They're, my dogs are going to hate it. I have a very old, old boxer, and um, I, don't, I don't know. I worry about her when I go back. I'm very nervous my dog has a lot of separation anxiety and i think that i just brought everything back from her for her and she might eat another couch oh another couch <laughs> yeah, I forgot yeah. About that. <laughs> um so i'm interested like how's a social distancing and quarantine going for you guys i mean i don't know for me it's a little different my husband still goes into work every day so things have not changed for him. So for mm. us, like we're, we're doing, we're going out where we can, what we can being careful, but you know, still trying to go and do however we can. Um, but we're trying to leverage the time here to, uh, you know, get a few things done. We got our boat ready to go on the water and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. For me, it's just been, um, it's, doesn't impact me as much. I don't feel it as much because I am in a different environment. So I'm just kind of staying at home with them. My brother's lucky enough that he gets to work from home as well. Um, we take like our weekly grocery trip and like load up on everything, come home and like we wipe everything down just because there's little kids running around and yeah. we just want to make sure everything is safe. Cool. Good deal. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, this has been a lot longer than I know that any of us expected. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, we're still here. Um, so before um, we get into like the main thing, main topics and everything, I want to like hear your stories on um, what made you want to become teachers? What did your journey look like? Um, I don't know. I didn't start out that way in college. Um, and I kind of got persuaded from journalism into more kinesiology. 
and just for my love of sports and it was kind of suggested to me to get a teaching certificate and I saw myself really only coaching and teaching PE and then I found myself teaching English and journalism and reading and all these things uh, <laughs> for pretty much uh, what 12 13 years before coming to uplift so yeah <laughs> Um, for me, it's kind of, I just grew up around like the education system and everything. My mom was a teacher. My dad was a teacher for a little bit. And I started teaching some lessons like when I was 16, as soon as I could be like certified as a lifeguard. Um, and I did some teaching and daycares in college and stuff. So I kind of just knew I loved working with kids and just kind of fell into it. Awesome. And how long have you been teaching for again? Uh, this will be my fourth year, finishing my fourth year. Oh, great. Yeah, I remember. Was was I there when you first started? Was you that were. your first year? Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the first year I started my job, too. Yeah. You guys were there for it as well. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. And which, uh, you're not at Meridian anymore. Which school are you at now? No, I'm at uh, Uplift Elevate. It's a brand new school this year. Okay. And what grades do you teach? I'm um, teaching first grade now. First grade. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And coach your um, K through fifth, right? At Meridian? Yep. K through fifth. It took me a long time to get my dream job, but I get to teach PE all day now. So Awesome. <laughs> yeah. PE is the best. Um, they might, I mean, kids won't admit it, but it definitely is. Uh, my kids are like, is today PE day? They're like always <laughs> hyped about it. They like, love to run around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we love it too. Hey, I've yeah. been having about 65 kids come to PE online. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. That, yeah, it's definitely not, um, definitely not losing popularity since that all this has happened. Yeah. Um, so before um, we talk about like how things have changed, I wanted to hear about like what your school day looked like um, when we had kids in session at, at the schools and everything. Um, I would say mine probably vastly look different from uh, Ms. Schneider's just in the way that I have a different group of kids about every 50 minutes. Um, so, you know, I start my day with uh, second graders, then third graders, um, first graders, and then uh, kinder and older kids in the afternoon. But um, pretty much it's very set schedule, a different group of uh, you know, kids each 50 minutes, and then I see, I only see um, each class once a week, where, you know, now that's a little different, but uh, yeah, basically a uh, constant action all day, um, and uh, just moving, you know, go, 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 so yeah. Yeah, for me, it was much different. I mean, I'm with the same group of kids all day, so my kids would come to school um, at 7.05, they can get breakfast and we like do the monitoring and duties in the morning. Um, and I'm with them, teaching them reading, math, science, and writing um, all day. And then at the end of the day, um, like three o'clock, we pack up, we go to car line and they go home and I stay and get things finished up for the next day and leave around like five o'clock. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, I mean, I'm not a teacher, but I mean, I was at your school for two years and I did kind of get to see um, what, what life looked like as a teacher. And I've thought about teaching before because I think, especially in primary school, which is what you both teach is, mm -hmm. I feel like that's something where males, um, there's not as many. And so I thought there would be such a beneficial, um, you know, for them to have that experience for a male teacher. Um, but I mean, things that scare me about being a teacher is like, Kind of like what you talked about, Ms. Schneider, about being with your kids all day, every day. <laughs> and also, like, another thing is just not being able to go to the bathroom. I mean, like, you're just, I mean, you're stuck <laughs> with them. You can't just leave them. You have to find a teacher friend that you can knock on the door and they can stand between the two classrooms and monitor both of them while you run to the bathroom real quick. You find your ways around it. But, yes, it's <laughs> challenging. 
that or teach specials or secondary, then you have time between classes. It's a very That's short true. amount of time that you, you get it done. You learn to get it done. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like you said, we don't have a single male teacher in our primary school right now. So it's definitely more male representation is needed. Yeah. Yes. Great. Yeah, especially for younger kids. Yeah. And I feel like I've definitely noticed that when I was at Meridian, um, just being able to connect with them. And so, yeah, I enjoy, I mean, I, I miss that, those times. Those were great times. Um, so I wanted to talk, I wanted to ask you guys, um, what is it like to be a teacher? Because um, people have an idea that it's just that you're teaching, but there's just a, whole, a little bit more to that. So how would you describe like what a teacher is? I think we we wear a lot of different hats in one day. Um, you know, sometimes we're the parent and we've got to kind of have that grace and that love and just just love on them. Other times, you know, we're the enforcers. And in many cases, we might be the only one in some children's lives that are actually enforcing rules or, um, you know, setting boundaries, which can put you in a really tough spot. Um, and I've learned over the years, you know, I've taught anywhere from kindergarten to seniors in high school. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. Kids are kids. Um, but on any given day, you're going to you're going to find yourself, you know, having to discipline a kid, hug a kid, feed a kid. Um, you know, just all, all the things all the time. And it doesn't really matter, matter whether it's elementary, middle or high school. I mean, you're just you know, mom, dad, teacher, friend, all wrapped into one most days. Yeah, I mean, we do a lot. I know one thing that like is huge is developing like a classroom culture. Mm -hmm. And one of those things that like also ties into it is we have a new curriculum, like a social emotional curriculum that we do in like our morning meetings. Like how important is it just to greet your kids and like, hey, how's your morning going? And just building those relationships because it's more than just learning all day. And if you don't have a relationship, it's really hard to get a respect even and have them like want to learn from you. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, and I never, I mean, I guess I never really thought about it whenever I was a kid, when I was in teaching, I think it's also just a different culture that we're growing up in where relationships are very important. And now, as teachers, you're asked to be a lot, like not just a teacher, but every, like a counselor, a parent, a friend, and all those things. And I mean, it's not easy to be able to find a way to balance all those things. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you guys about um, your school, which is Uplift, um, because I think they're, the model is really unique. And I wanted to read this out loud just because I want to make sure I get it right, which is Uplift's mission is to create and sustain public schools of excellence that empower students to reach their highest potential in college and the global marketplace and inspire in students a lifelong love of learning, achievement, and service in order to positively change their world. A goal is that all scholars would graduate and enroll into college. And so I think that's a really awesome miss mission to be able to impart to um, all our scholars and also especially the ones in our area which really um, need those things um, because it's going to be very beneficial when growing up. Um, so tell me about what's different about the learning model at Uplift compared to other schools. Um, I've you know, taught at several different ISD, well not several, but a few different ISDs and um, coming to Uplift I just noticed even though it is you know elementary school that mindset of college going behaviors is it's there like starting in kindergarten and using the the terminology the verbiage uh, i think a lot of um that can be attributed to the fact that we uh, all uplift schools if they are not already will be ib international baccalaureate schools and um implementing that type of curriculum where it's everything kind of is intertwined and um, you know, all subjects kind of work together and flow together and showing those connections, not just, you know, in their own little community, but as a, as a global world. Um, that's something as someone who's been you know, teaching a while, I, I hadn't seen that in other schools I've been in. And I taught until Meridian had taught uh, exclusively secondary. 
Um, so to see that kind of mindset with younger kids, I think that's that's huge with uh, you know the idea of college for everyone. And but also having that mindset and the, the terminology being used in the classrooms, in the hallways, in the office, in every part of the school, everyone is using that kind of you know language in a common language of success and you know higher learning. Mm -hmm. And we like I never would have thought about college when I was in like primary like elementary school when I was growing up and now like my call like my classroom is themed after my college that I went to and so they're all like oh I want to go to Allegheny College like and they can like say all these different things or we teach um about different colleges we used to at Meridian we did like a college spotlight each week and everything yeah. so they're exposed to more um so it's just it's pretty cool to have that already in their brains like at six years old. Yeah, that is really cool. I, I agree. Like, uh, yeah, I know me and coach both went to UNT, both proud, mean green. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really awesome to be able to rep your schools and for the kids to be like, oh, I, I could go there. So that's really cool. Um, um, so I want to, all right, so I want to bring some context to our current situation. Um, so before, so we were on spring break, which was about the second week of March. And um, so the coronavirus kind of just started hitting and then our, clo our schools closed temporarily for two weeks at the time. And then it temporarily just kept increasing um, throughout, throughout time. And then eventually um, most schools, like at least in Texas, um, have been closed for the rest of the school year. Um, kind of like I said earlier, it's not that we, that school is canceled completely, they're still learning. It's just they're not coming physically. And so it canceled like all sorts of plans, such as the star testing got waived, uh, field day graduation award ceremonies aren't happening in the traditional sense. And um, as teachers also, like kind of like what you were talking about earlier, Ms. Schneider, about building relationships with these kids, never really get, get, got a chance to say goodbye or give that one last hug to your students. Mm -hmm. So I would just, this is something I really want to hear about is like, what are the struggles of this situation that we're in that, maybe people don't really realize teachers are struggling with. I know like for me and Alan, you and I talked about this before and um, this particular group of fifth graders at Meridian was my first group of kindergartners when I came to Meridian. So I had never, since my student teaching, I'd never taught elementary. These kids, uh, I like to tell people they broke me in, um, you know, good and bad ways. <laughs> um, and for me, it was going to be something very special that I was there that whole time with them to be able to watch them take that next step, you know, kind of ceremonially and with the awards and whatnot. Um, so I, when I, and if you guys are, know this, when they made the announcement official with Uplift, um, I, I was devastated. Like, I, I hate to be like overly dramatic, but yeah. Um, and I actually took to t social media and just kind of put my feelings out there and found out that I was not the only teacher that felt this way. I think we all, in a sense, feel robbed because those relationships were there. But this is the time that you get to have to really kind of just foster those relationships for a lifetime, you know, have the, the celebrations, celebrate the hard work, you know, field day. I've been planning an Olympic themed uh, field day for months now. And, you know, um, as you, you both know, we my running club does a race in Lake Worth, uh, the Colson's Frog. I, I, up until the day before the race, I still had kids asking me, well, what time are we meeting? I'm like, oh. so um, yeah, you know, the things that we look forward to, they, they're no more. And then having to temper that with how you explain it to a child. And I'm still meeting with them virtually every day. So to look at them, even through a screen and say, I don't know. I don't know. It, I mean, to put it very frankly, it, it sucks. And, um, you know, we're just kind of dealing with it. You kind of have to work through it, you know, in your mind and in your heart. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very similar. I was just like the initial shock of it. Like, what do you mean? I'm not going back. Like I was ready to go back to school on Monday and see my kids and greet them and talk to them about spring break. But, and then I was like, okay, two weeks. Okay. What is this going to look like? okay, now it's going to be like forever. Like it was just a big adjustment of like after the shock of, okay, how do we keep them learning still? 
in this environment and are we doing enough or what can we do? Um, and I just honestly thought about uh, looping up to second grade with my kids just because I wasn't done with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just felt like I had such great relationships with these kids and I know I can build relationships with my next group of scholars coming in next year. But I just, I didn't get to like have that final like celebrations at the end of the year and celebrate like how far mm -hmm. they've come since the beginning of the year and see how much they've grown. Like it just kind of felt like I got robbed of the end of the school year and that fun and yeah. all the things we had planned for. Yeah, it's a, uh... I mean, I, I I think I mean I'll I mean honestly, like whenever like the week before spring break, I mean I never really thought that Friday was going to be the last time physically saw them. I really never like that never crossed my mind. I never thought about those that that being a possibility, and um, I think something and I've talked to some parents about this is um, like some like you know you know the kids, they think we're like super old. They think like we were, were there when dinosaurs existed. And, they're, yeah. and, and some of them will think like, oh man, so what did you guys do whenever this happened? And the thing is, it's like, this has never happened. I mean, I was like, we really don't know. We're experiencing this with you guys as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, uh, and I think that's, and I'm glad that you sh shared those things because I think, um, that's what pe I think some people think that, oh, you get a break, but that's not how we view it, especially as educators and as people who invest into kids is that these are people we invest into, like for some of us, like who don't have kids, these are our kids and, um, for them to, to not be there and kind of like what you talked about coach Ford, like your kids that you started with in kindergarten and our fifth grade. And there's a possibility that you might not be able to get to see them next year because they are going to move to middle school and everything. Exactly. And it's just difficult. Yeah. And, you know. And, and so those were actually my first group of uh, second graders as well. And so I had planned to like go back to Meridian and watch them graduate too. So it's a lot. Yeah, it is. And so um, I mean, and so you talked about it, you said you still get to see your kids because you guys are doing virtual teaching. And so what is that like, um, virtual teaching and like creating videos and teaching kids just through a screen? Like, what's that experience like? Um, I'll go first. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to sound too negative uh, because it, it's been a steep learning curve. And I definitely can say that I've learned something out of this. Um, but I can also say that I've learned that I'd, I would not be a good distance learning teacher, whether it be some of the different programs people do or through college, um, just because I, I want to have that time with the kids and I don't know, it, it's just so awkward through a screen, um, and having to learn like I, my videos took forever to record. Um, I had to have at least one video a week. I usually had three or four um posted to youtube and then of course to our website and um it would take me forever because i would i would just like carry on talking to the camera like i'm talking to the kids i'm like oh my gosh they're not going to watch watch all this and i'd stop re-record be more concise and then having the classes with them like i mentioned earlier in some cases i might have 65 kids show up and i i offer several different times throughout each day and you know all five days a week but for whatever reason, they all like one o'clock, which I get it. At, their, at that point, they've got the wiggles. And I, I love that they're all there, but trying to manage it. And we do have to make sure we track attendance for anything we do. So, you know, t taking attendance sometimes can take, you know, five, 10 minutes in some cases. And that you just, you got to learn ways around that. It, 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 you both have heard me talk about like, oh, I, I have to figure out how to mute them so I can give the instructions. <laughs> and I, I learned that. Today we had a discussion about chatting and how they are not to be chatting when we should be doing exercises or while I'm giving instructions and how we should not be inappropriate in our chatting. And, you know, things that you, I just, it didn't enter my consciousness at all. Some of the things that, um, I've dealt with um, and, and then you also have to kind of look at the oh I'm in my house I've got my dogs here um, you know I had 
one of the dogs was being super noisy and wanted to go out. I had to literally, okay, guys, I'll be right back and had to let the dog out, come back to the screen. Uh, but also just that, like, I, oh, I'm going to run a load of laundry and I, I've got 10 minutes before my next class. And it's just, it's, it's, it's awkward. It's weird. I'm not in the building. I'm not in my routine, but I'm still trying to have those touch points, still trying to still have those experiences and also just making sure that those skills that I taught them are not kind of, they're not going to be forgotten. Um, so next year, whether, whatever grade they're in, we, we, we're not starting from ground zero, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's been a very different experience. We have done a combination of both um, YouTube videos and um, doing like Zoom sessions with our kids. And we have been trying to, um, I like personally, I've been doing like a math video every single day and posting it on YouTube because I don't want them to go into second grade and like, hey, you missed four, two months of learning and go ahead and try and do the second grade curriculum now. Um, so like trying to get them new content and hoping that the foundations that I've built up since the beginning of the year are gonna get them to kind of understand or they might have support at home but you don't know what's going on in their homes as well. Mm -hmm. And hope, like when we have your Zoom um, classes that they're gonna show up, but you never know who's gonna show up. And so you can't just be like, oh, they didn't show up this week. So I can just, you know, teach them again next week when you have people who are showing up like every week mm -hmm. and you just have to keep on moving and hope that they're doing something to keep learning. Cause we can only do so much as teachers and I just, have to keep reminding myself like we're doing what we can and they have access to what they have access to and we can keep trying. Yeah, that's exactly right. You, you just, you know, we only can do so much sometimes. I think we're just kind of throwing darts in the dark, trying to ho hopefully we're hitting the targets here and there. Um, it, I think Ms. Schneider nailed, hit the nail on the head. You know, we only can do so much and um, we're, I, I know, Everybody I know and everybody at Meridian and all my other colleagues from around the state, they're, they're giving it everything they've got. Yeah, and I think uh, um, something just to think about is like, I mean, there was, I mean, this was something you never were taught in school, like how to teach virtually and what that's gonna look like. Like this was just, you know, completely thrown at us, like unplanned and I mean, it's, great that we do have technology and we do have ways that we can reach out to um, students. Um, but at the same time, like it was just, you know, an adjustment, adjustment that we had to make. And um, I mean, I watched some of your uh, videos, Coach Ford, and I was like thinking, oh man, I could use these with our kids once we're, we're there, when they're ready to get back into, um, to whenever we take them back into the club. And um, I haven't seen your channel yet, Ms. Schneider, but I mean, that's something, you know, we do have, we do prioritize education and we can use, and those are things we can use as well. Um, and so I think that's what's really cool um, to think about is how like those videos, like especially on YouTube can not just reach your kids, but can reach other kids as well. And it could be a way that maybe they can learn that maybe their teacher couldn't really communicate the best way to them that just didn't resonate with them. Oh yeah, well, I've been told by our administration that um, we Meridian set up their own website to kind of, we were a little late to the party with it, just because like you said, nobody was prepared for this. So it took time. Uh, someone donated their time and talent to create this website. And um, everything that we, uh, that the Meridian teachers have created lessons wise will still live there. So once mm -hmm. we're back to normal, um, that will all still be there. So whether it be for a sub plan, um, enrichment, whatever. Um, so I do think if you want to look at it that way, yeah, we, this work, the work we're doing is not in vain. We, it will be used. Right. Not, it wasn't just as a response to this. Yeah. And, uh, let me ask you guys something. So do you think that with like, you know, you're, you're kind of learning these new skills on how to teach virtually and like creating videos and being able to create content that way. Do you see that being something in the future for education or even for yourself to use that in your classrooms whenever you go back? Oh yeah, I mean, I think, you know, even though it's still not something that's natural for me, I, it will 
I, I want to be able to leverage these skills um, to just, I mean, we're clearly working with children that are, you know, technology driven. So, I mean, I, it would be an absolute waste of time and talent for me to just be like, yeah, wait, I don't need to do that anymore. No, absolutely. We'll be leveraging these skills um, when I'm, I'm still back in the gym. Yeah, we're always like looking for different ways to like implement different technology into the classroom and stuff. So I definitely have gotten the hang of like making Kahoot and just making all the different like technology resources. And then also being able to like expose the parents to like, hey, this is how your kids log in in the classroom. And this is the resources that we've been using. And I gave them like that big list and all the links to the resources. Um, I definitely think it's something that's going to help our scholars in the future of like, different supports that they can have at home and in the classroom. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, let me ask you guys something. So um, I've heard this from parents that are struggling because they've transitioned into a, a homeschool teacher and they don't, they haven't learned the skills or they just don't know the best ways to teach their kids, but they still want their kids to have an education, um, but they just sometimes they just struggle. And so what are ways that parents can help their kids with their schoolwork and education through this time? What are things you guys would recommend, um, ways that can possibly help? Well, I mean, one thing I, I keep reiterating to our parents through email, phone conversations, however, is that, you know, the teachers, they're, they're not gone. And um, yeah, they they may feel a little lost with whatever is being put out there, but I I encourage any parent that's struggling and especially in these last few weeks to just reach out to their child's teacher or teachers if it's uh, secondary, but just to make sure you know they're there to help and explain and um, you know they're not they're not doing this alone um, and I would think that's their best resource right there are the people that you know do this job on a regular basis. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. I mean, constantly, like, I mean, we're still here as teachers. We want them to learn. We want to help them. I know I personally and other teachers have, like, hopped on a quick FaceTime and been like, hey, this is how you do this problem. Well, let me show you different ways or, like, sending you examples of, like, what the exemplar, like, work is or what the answers are to it and, like, working out the problems. Um, definitely a great resource to go to the teachers, like, yeah. I mean, I get parents who call me pretty late at night, but I also understand that like they're working from home as well. And sometimes they can't help their kids until it's like yeah, after 5 p.m. or work hours. Yeah. So it's like a fine line of when our workday ends, but it's also when is the time that's going to work for their kids as well and your scholars. Yeah, I've run into that as well. I mean, with PE, it's not so much, oh, how do I do this? But sometimes it's more like, well, what can I do to get them moving more? This, you know, in addition to the things I've put out there. And I mean, I have to keep in mind that a lot of our parents at Meridian, they're still, go they're like my husband, they're still going into work. So when I'm, I'm doing these Zoom classes or their kids are accessing the videos, it, they, they're probably not home. So um, yeah, I, I answer my phone after hours because I know, hey, they just got off work and they need to talk it out. Yeah. yeah, and I think something um, to really encourage parents with is, I mean, just like, you know, all of us have changed um, through the times is to, um, you know, this wasn't something that you expected or was, was asked to take on. And to definitely um, give yourself some grace in these areas as well. Um, and I think what you both um, reiterated is that, um, that you guys aren't God, even though you're not meeting physically, you're not meeting with them physically or as long as you did, you're not gone. You're still there as resources to be able to help them through this as well. And so it's not like that they don't have you. They still do have their teachers. It, it looks different, but they're still there and that you guys are still, you know, happy to help in the best way because you want the same thing that they want, the best education for their kids. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so um, I want to, I always love to, I always want to ask like a really, you know, uplifting, positive question. And so um, through your experiences of, um, through your experiences as a teacher, what would you say are some of your favorite stories or moment as a teacher, or even anything that's been encouraging that you've heard through this, uh, you know, isolation quarantine period? 
I don't know. Like, well, as a teacher, I think in general, anytime that light bulb goes on for a kid, whether it be, would be when I taught, you know, like middle school English and they finally understand that grammar concept and use it correctly, or in PE when, you know, the, the scholar who, you know, was unable to run a lap without stopping just ran two or what have you, that, you know, seeing progress, I think is just always the most encouraging thing as a teacher. But I mean, looking at this particular situation being, um, you know, not with our kids and, you know, the buildings closed. I, I think the most encouraging thing I had was when I, I really didn't think anybody would come to virtual PE. I'm like, I'm going to have a Zoom class. We'll see what this is like. And I had the first day, like 50 kids. And I'm like, <laughs> and, and they did what I asked them to do. And we may, may, may or may not always get that in, uh, in the gym. And we were getting that on a computer and that just showed me that they, they needed it one and two, um, they were still there. So, you know, we were talking about, we're still here, but they were, they, they wanted to learn. They want to know, uh, you know, and have the experiences. So that was, that, that's what's been keeping me going. Even on the days when I'm like, Oh man, now I just keep remembering that first class and that, you know, Hey, they're still there. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned earlier, kids like are like mind blown when they find out that we're actually humans and we have families and we live a life as well. So just being in a different environment and I have like weekly hangouts with my class and I have my niece and my nephew here. So randomly like they'll just pop in on the video and they'll just sit and they'll laugh and wave hi. And my kids will be like, wait, Ms. Schneider, you have kids? I'm like, no, 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 I don't have kids. And they're like, wait, if you have kids, we should call you Mrs. Schneider. And just like the funny like stories and like just the funny moments, like they're just, they're kids and you're just teaching them these things and they're just say whatever comes to their mind. So it just, it's always entertaining. Yeah, I agree. I know mine, like in my classes, the virtual classes, cause they, they all know my dogs. They know my dog's names. Cause that's something I share and bond with them over like, when we would be in class at school and so they would start calling the dogs names during class as I'm trying to so that was fun <laughs> one of my favorite things like uh that I've done each year since I started working with boys and girls club is doing our um Cowtown 5k with the kids um that's always so much fun um to be a part of and to also just to teach them about exercise and also something that all three of us are really passionate about, which is running, something that we really get to do and we get to include them a part of that experience. And, um, and I'm so glad we got to do that before this all hit, that they, we got that experience with them because, um, uh, yeah, I, it's something I look forward to each year that we do it. That was my favorite weekend. <laughs> Yeah, I was literally just thinking about that. I was like, oh my God, like this happened right before all of this. And I'm so glad that like, it's a lot of build up to that big day. And I'm so glad that we at least got to like do that fun with the kids before all of this. I know, I mean, there's, st there, my kiddos are upset because they don't get to do that second race. But I mean, I can't imagine if we'd not gotten the Caltown weekend. Right. I mean, that's like Christmas weekend. I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah, and one of my favorite ones was, I, th I think this was my second year, and was it, I think it was the year where, where we were at the starting line, and then they made us go back because they saw yeah. lightning. Yeah. And we got all the kids together, and we got them back and everything. Yep. And like a ton, like almost majority of them waited, like till like two hours or so, and then we actually did it. And it was, it was such a fun experience. I mean, it was, it was crazy, but it was awesome. They gave them some of the vendors were giving them energy gels, so they <laughs> were amped, man. I mean, they were, they were amped, they were ready, and they're like, "Well, we're gonna get it done before the storm." I'm like, "You're right, you do go." <laughs> yeah, and that was a hilarious year. They were that eating was. all the things in the expo, the turkey legs or whatever they were eating. But you know what? <laughs> they were ready to run. Oh they man, were. they were. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's great. Um, so um, before um, we close out, there's a couple things we, I want to do. So um, one thing is, is that I love to teach um, activities that we can do at home. 
And so I was talking to Coach Ford about this yesterday, actually, was I looked at my calendar, like the 18th, and we were going to do field day. I was set up. I was, you know, scheduled to be there and to help out with it. And, um, and it's one of my favorite events, like when I was in elementary school as well. And so um, something that Coach Ford, you did as an adjustment is you actually thought and created a field day plan that kids can do at home with permission and supervision of their parents, of course. Yeah. And so I wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about that, like what a home, day, home of at home field day looks like and like what are some activities that kids can do to celebrate and still participate field day at their homes? Well, what we're doing is dedicating um, a whole day for it with Meridian. So they will uh, talk about and even do some of the uh, activities in their morning meetings with their homeroom teacher. And then I'm go going to start PE early that day. Uh, actually, it's this uh, next Wednesday, the 20th. And um, we're going to do only seven rotations where we would have many more on actual field day. And um, instead of doing the uh, Olympic theme, my boss had asked me if we could keep it local and kind of have pride in our homes, uh, which I thought was amazing. So we're having a Texas Pride Field Day. And um, each grade level is adopting a city in Texas, and they're going to dress for the field day in athletic attire that reflects that city. It's going to be really cute. We've got a lot of coastal towns, so I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a bunch of beach clothes, swimsuits, you know, the whole shebang for that. Um, one, I, my rotations are, I had to, I really had to think hard on this just because, you know, kids don't have a lot of equipment at home. Like I've been going over it. I'm like, okay, who has a hula hoop? And there's like crickets. It's like, okay. So like for the hula hoop contest, they're going to move without a hoop like just do, do the motion of a hula hoop. I'm not going to, you know, do that for y'all right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, things like locomotor skill relay race and, or just on, because there may not be that many people in their home, but just a race with either a sibling or a parent, you know, crab walking, bear crawling, frog hop, side shuffle, skipping, galloping. Um, for the little ones like K2, I have things, you know, walking, simple running, just things to have some fun and practice those skills they've learned. Um, of course, I have a water and healthy snap break in there because trying to keep promoting that idea of nutrition. Um, I have a jump rope contest and each, each rotation is only 10 minutes long. Um, and when we do it together as a group um, in PE, we'll try to, we might even shorten that a little bit more. Um, the jump rope contest, again, when I would ask, hey, who has a jump rope? Crickets. So we, uh, you know, th they know how to jump without a rope because I don't, you know, if we're doing some kind of warm up in class, I don't always bust out jump ropes because that can get a little much. <laughs> so uh, they know how to jump rope without a rope, just pretending. So uh, they'll do that. Um, I, this is my every day. I think my husband's home. Uh, one of them is a dance party, so, um, you know, they can put on any music they'd like and have a, a dance party, and I, I tell them they can dance for up to 10 minutes. Uh, I toss across, I, and I tell them, okay, so if you don't have a ball, because I do have, I, I was teaching other PE teachers across, across the network the day before spring break when it was like staff day, so I actually have equipment at my house. I'm very blessed. But, you know, I, the kids are like, I don't have a ball. I'm like, how about a dog toy? How about a stuffed animal? And everybody has one of those. And they're, you know, we have to go over, don't pick up something breakable. Don't pick up something that doesn't belong to you. You know, that kind of thing that let them, you know, just tossing back and forth with somebody for 10 minutes. Um, I think that's uh, pretty much all of them. Again, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I've also got a hopscotch race for my older ones, literally where they would do the movements of their feet and they've got to race somebody else to do it. Yeah, still not asking them to draw a hopscotch board because we may or may not have chalk, but just keeping it something fun, something different, but not requiring a lot of equipment and whatnot. Just knowing that we may or may not have it. You know, I get that some parents might go out to Target and buy some, but some may not be able to or may not want to in the current situation. So 
Yeah. 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 I mean, I love field day. I mean, I feel like as adults, we should do field day as well. Uh, yeah. And, and something I want to, I want to see, I hope that you see this at, um, at your in, at home field day is if they race one of their pets, like their dog and see uh -huh. who would win. Oh, I could actually do that. That's about the only people that are here <laughs> who works all day. So, cause they're always like, well, who are you going to race coach? I'm like, I guess the dogs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, um, so these are some, th so to close out our time, I usually ask these three questions um, to, you know, just to, because I'm curious. And so the first question is, what is one thing you most miss during this isolation quarantine period? Honestly, I don't know. I miss going to like, actually being in the building and having the interaction with my coworkers like every day. Like I've said, you know, my husband is work, goes to work every day. He has an interaction with his colleagues. He comes home and is like, wants his downtime like we all would, right? And I've been talking to a screen or to the dogs all day. So yeah, it's, I, I miss having interaction and, you know, human conversations, adult conversations that don't involve a screen or a phone. Yeah. Um, mine's very similar. <laughs> so I've just gotten so used to just talking to myself in front of a computer now. <laughs> so I just really miss the face to face conversations and just being around people and just being able to like, Hey, do you want to go get lunch? Or, Hey, you want to go get dinner? Like just seeing people in person. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anyways, also, by the way, they don't have to be school related, work related, but it's cool if it is um, that I just want to let you know that. Um, second one, what is one thing you have learned through this time? I think I, because I am very much so a planner, you guys probably know, both know me well enough to know, like my lesson plans are usually done in October for the rest of the school year. And I'm a bit of a control freak. So um, I had to learn to let go. Um, it wasn't easy. And there's still days that I'm just like, you know, um, but just learning that um, I can't plan, and, you know, a month in advance, a week in advance, or sometimes even a day in advance. I have to just literally go day by day, minute by minute. And um, just, I'm, I've learned to go with the flow to a point. Um, can't say that I'm 100% there, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I never really thought of myself as very tech savvy but i feel like i've kind of become like all right i can do this and like i've created some like different spreadsheets and like coded them to like do different things and just making different like invitations and all like just doing all the things virtually um i guess like i've become a little tech savvy yeah, I think it's interesting. I think that, I mean, in some ways we've learned new skills through this. And also like with when you're, when you talked about control coach board, um, it kind of teaches us how lack of control we really do have when things like this happen. Um, so last question is, what is one thing you most look forward to when we are free again, when restrictions are gone and, you know, life is kind of like what it was before? What's something you're looking forward to? I never thought I would say this as a veteran teacher because usually the first day of school is one of those days that's just filled with headaches and, you know, just the chaos. But I'm really looking forward to the first day of school. I'm looking forward to having that moment and getting to have that time with them. Uh, personally, for me, I actually just got my passport in January and I was super, super excited that I was going to finally like leave the U.S. and go somewhere. Um, change of plans. I'm definitely not doing that until it's safe again. So I'm yeah, really looking yeah. forward to being able to use my passport. Awesome. awesome. I'll go with you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. So Ms. Schneider and Coach Ford, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to me today. Um, I feel that what you guys shared is going to really resonate with a lot of people, especially like fellow teachers. I think they can definitely identify with what you're saying. And I mean, I've been definitely um, very privileged to be able to work with both of you at some capacity and also getting to know you on a personal level and becoming friends. And so I know that, you know, we'll still talk and we'll still hang out and everything. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I know that this is hard for you, um, and um, but I'm really excited for that day when you will get to teach again in person. And I, I agree with you, Coach War, with like the first day of school when everything is back. I think it's going to be amazing. I think that um, there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, have a lot of joy. And I think like, you know, you really get to, you know, embrace that moment. Yes. Definitely. Is there anything you want to say or share with your students um, before we sign off? Anything you want to say to them? Um, I miss you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm not gone. Like I've said all along, I'm here. I'm just a phone call away. And to my fifth graders, uh, you better come and visit me. Like <laughs> it, that, it, it's not optional. Um, I need I, I I need all the hugs when it's allowed. So, mm -hmm. um, but until then, I'm um, I'm just a phone call, a text, a Zoom call away. Um, I I'm here for you guys, 100. percent Yeah, for me, I mean, I just want to tell my kids like I love them, I miss them. They're doing great. Like no matter what you're doing and what you're able to do at home, like. They're gonna be ready for second grade and like coach Ford said like I expect some visits from people and like feel free to send me anything via dojo or your parents have my cell phone I just love being updated on their lives even though we're not in the classroom still awesome thank you yeah and I mean this is good um, for them to know is that I mean as teachers we do care about them we do love them and um, and I think that they know that even though they might not admit it and and just like we said we miss you guys and we know that you miss us i know you might not admit it to our faces or ever express this but we know that you miss miss us and we can't wait to see you again yeah. um so thank you guys so much and just remember to be healthy stay safe please be kind to one another and um we're gonna make it through this and we'll see you next week bye guys